Hello folks, and welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today I want to talk to you about these two computers. They're both Ryzen-based machines. All right, this big tower here, this one is my Darkbase Pro 900 Rev 2 that I have built out a Ryzen 5 3600 system in it with an RX 580, 16 gig RAM, SSD. It's a basic workstation build. This is my Ryzen 5 3600 and I'm changing the cooler. So I'm removing the stock cooler that it came with, this little dinky one, and I'm gonna put on the Scythe Fuma Rev B. And that's what I'm working on right now. So I've got this that was sent to me a while ago that I've never installed. And uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to use it. And I'm now installing the bracketry for the new cooler. And one of the interesting things about it is that these, is that these guys here, they're just, whoops, are just press fit on and they're just risers so that you reuse the original back plate on the motherboard and you're just press fitting those on and then using the bracketry in the proper orientation and long screws which tie in through the motherboard, through the riser, and into the backplate. You are using the stock original backplate in this scenario, and this is where they're showing you remove the original outer ring, which I did previously when I installed the stock cooler, add the plastic risers, and then screw in your mounting brackets, making sure that you use the AM4 mounting hole, which is the inside one. All right, so I'm gonna carry on with the install. This seems to be symmetrical, so I'm just going to Plop it on here, squeeze and wiggle, and then we'll get it mounted in. Now I'm going to torque it down evenly, and then we'll come back when it's ready to install fans. Sorry guys, I forgot I was making a video. The fans are on, it's installed, tempered glass is in, I just got to put the back plate on, and then we'll start running it and get some thermals. The front intake fan, I did have to pull it up a bit as it is touching the RAM, so you can see that that front fan does sit a little bit higher than the middle. What I have done though that you haven't seen yet is I've made it so that it can boot into Mac. So I've made a Ryzen Tosh. That's what this drive here on the top is for. I have made this. This is the fastest SSD I've ever made. This one is a full 10 gigabits per second NVMe M.2 drive. I will show you that a bit more about it in the future. But what I do want to talk about is how I have this set up. So this system will boot Windows, which I have set up, but it will also run Mac. So when I boot it up, it sits in the Clover bootloader and it just waits for me to choose what operating system that I want. So I'm going to choose to boot into Mac OS. Shows that the last time I shut down had an issue, but it is currently going to boot up into Mac OS right now. So I set this up using the AMD vanilla driver installation method. I will probably make a future video about that, about some of the things that I ran into that were a little bit of an issue. But overall, I do have it running and stable in Mac OS. Most of the reason why I run Mac is for iMovie. Using iMovie, that just allows me to transfer over all of my projects. Right now, it's completely empty because I don't have an external drive plugged in. I try and keep all of my movie project media on external drives. Then I can move it between machines. So that's why this one's completely empty. But the point here is that I built a workstation for being doing Mac stuff. And this is a full Ryzen 5 3600. It comes up, it thinks that it's a Mac Pro. iMac Pro, actually. And it has a Radeon RX 580 in it. That system works awesome for running Windows and Mac. Now, I've tried to do the same with this one. This one is the Ryzen 5 3400G, and I was gonna put this one downstairs so that I could uh, be doing edit up here. This is my office, right? Sometimes I don't wanna sit in my office all day long and I wanna go to a different location. So I was going to have this one in a different room where I could do edits off of this little guy. This one's the Micro ATX based Ryzen 5 3400G. Does not have a discrete graphics card in it. Unlike this one, which has a full graphics card inside of it, this Ryzen 5, it's just the CPU. The CPU has graphics built into it. And it works to boot up into Mac OS. Let me show you, I did get it to work. And shut down my big workstation, unplug my external boot drive, Plug it into this guy and I'm going to show you that this one also will boot up into Mac OS with the way that I've set this up. As both are on similar CPU architectures, without anything special being added to that drive, it will boot Mac OS on this system. Alright, I've now got my little micro ATX Ryzen 5 plugged in and I'm just going to power on the power supply. 
Overall, the system's fully functional and we're gonna boot it up now. I have to get into the BIOS right now to actually choose my boot drive because I'm gonna show you that I can boot Mac OS on it, but it is all set up for Windows for the customer, which we'll get into in the second half of this video. All right, so I'm going into my boot drive here. This is a Ryzen 5 3400. I'm just gonna go into boot and uh, choose uh, my boot override. So I can choose that I'm gonna boot off my external. Doing that now, and this will ask me to boot into Mac OS. Okay, so same boot menu that we just saw on the other bigger computer. This is the same idea. We're just gonna choose boot from Ryzentosh. It's in the middle of wanting an update. If I try and choose the uh, install, it does crash, but uh, I can choose just boot into the OS, and this will work. So this is now booting off of the small little guy. So I've got it set up so that it would dual boot where I could move that external hard drive from one machine to the other and it'll boot up into Mac OS. Pretty cool, right? And there it is. And it's the exact same everything. It's the same hard drive. So it has all the same everything that would be on that system. I would just move it from the machine to the machine. The reason why I can't use this as a full Mac OS system when I want to is because the graphics. So the biggest problem with running Mac OS on a Ryzen 5 3400G or any Ryzen system right now that has integrated graphics is that the graphics driver does not work. So you get no hardware accelerated graphics, which makes it almost completely useless for video editing or watching video or browsing websites, it's hard to show you. You're not quite seeing that there's a problem, but if you try and actually run anything, anything that has kind of a graphical animation, you see how slow that was to expand and contract. So it is possible to run Mac OS on a Ryzen 5 3400G using the built-in graphics, but you don't get any kind of acceleration at all, which makes it pretty buggy and what the Mac forums call is unusable. So I've decided that that's not gonna be a good idea for me. I'm just gonna to continue to use my laptop and then I've also got my big workstation set up where it does run Mac OS perfectly. It gets full hardware acceleration, everything works. The small little guy, while I did get it compatible to boot Mac OS and Windows dual boot on between them, it just performance wasn't there because of the graphics issue. And for me to fix that, I was going to have to put in a $200 plus graphics card, which I did not want to do. So I'm just shutting down Mac OS now and I'm gonna boot it up into Windows and show you how we've got that set up. For a Windows boot up, I don't have to do anything special. It's just gonna boot up normally. And I've installed this with Windows 10 and it runs great. I just don't need a third Windows based system. So what I'm gonna do is sell the system. And this is actually for an RC racer. And I've set this up so that he can run VRC Pro. That is one really cool thing that you can do with Windows is that all the game support that it has. And there's one particular game for RC racers, it's a simulator. It allows you to take a receiver from your RC car, plug it into USB, and then you can actually drive the cars with your radio system. So I've set the system up and tested it where the performance based on the integrated graphics in the CPU of the Ryzen 5, it is absolutely good enough to run this. So this system is gonna get sold off as a system for VRC Pro, and it's gonna run just off of the base graphics. I've tested it at 1080p, it can run up to 90 frames a second, which is pretty darn awesome. He's gonna get all of the full retail, it's like a new computer build. So he's gonna get the Devastator 3, this is a brand new keyboard and mouse that I bought for the system that I never used. There's a motherboard, the uh, the CPU, all of the all of the accessories. So this is the Ryzen box with integrated Radeon graphics, some extra memory. This is the SSD that's in it, the Lexar NM600, and just all of the supporting documentation for the system and extra hardware. Then for Wi-Fi, while this dongle did not work in Mac OS. It does work excellent in Windows. This one's the Micro AC1200 by TrendNet. The, this thing is awesome. It gets surprisingly good signal strength. I've used it in my back room and it got through the thick walls, no problem. 
I'm very happy with this thing, so it's also going to get sold off with it. Just because the system is also likely going to be going into a basement, not near an Ethernet jack, so at least then it has Wi-Fi. There's no fancy lighting in this thing. I have shown you this system a few times before as I've built it out. There's nothing fancy going on with it. It's a basic Ryzen 5 3400G, 16 gigabyte dual channel RAM. There's no graphics card in it because it doesn't need one because the integrated CPU has a very good graphics built in. This thing is ripe for expansion. It has one five and a quarter inch bay available has all the storage bays available because the only storage drive that's in here is the one M.2 drive. Everything else is free. So it's a really good system as a starter machine to get into PC use and gaming. And beyond that, it's pretty much unlimited of what you could put in this for a video card or a CPU upgrade because you do have full length here support for a big video card as well as upgrading the CPU with these Ryzen boards. The older Cinebench R15 also has a graphics performance test, which I'm doing right now. Not bad for a benchmark test, not bad. If you're curious to see how well this machine plays other games, I have shown videos of it before running Grid 2 when I built it. I'm going to keep my current VRC set up because this dongle has been discontinued, a little bit obsolete now. There is a newer version which supports faster protocols as well as four channel. Orange dongle is the older style. There's a new white one out that runs faster and has four channels. So he's gonna order that, but he's gonna get all this hardware to get set up with. Uh, pretty much ready to go for the customer. I've got it all set up for them. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you that um, what my plan was for that machine. And I just wanted to give an up, one last update on it before it's no longer shown on my channel. Because that'll probably be the last time you ever see this machine will be in this video. So yeah, this machine's going to go off. And then we're going to continue on tweaking macOS on my big workstation. As there's a couple of bugs I need to fix with that. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.